Robert Eggers, the writer-director responsible for my favorite horror film of the decade, 2015's The Witch, proved that with that film he could craft complex, period-accurate, atmospheric deep dives into the dark, often unexplored, repressed recesses of human nature. And what makes that attribute so impressive is the fact that it didn't get in the way of his ability to explore larger societal themes on a lavish canvas painted beautifully with rich mythology, fleshed-out characters, amazing storytelling, and genuine cinematic mastery. Over the last few years, I've heard his name attached to several large studio projects, most notably the Nosferatu remake, which sounded too perfect to be true, and that turned out to be the case, as the project fell through for whatever reason. But a little while ago, news broke that Eggers was tackling a new, original project starring Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson to be shot in Nova Scotia in brutal conditions, and I was instantly interested. That film turned out to be The Lighthouse, and when the official title, limited details, and some technical specifications came out, it became my most anticipated film of 2019. The Lighthouse is phenomenal. Like, like really, really, really good. And I don't really know how else to explain it without going into the aesthetics, which make up the majority of this experience for me, so let's dive in. The cinematography is mind-blowing. Using the Panavision Panaflex Millennium XL2, shooting with spherical lenses from 1905 to ones made as late as the 30s with an orthochromatic filter, the lighthouse does not resemble anything else in cinema for like the last few decades. The visual language is a beautiful dissonant mesh of that very strange orthochromatic look of washed out skies and pale white values and more modern LED bright bulb high contrast lighting and contemporary ease of movement for the camera. The 1, 1, 9 to 1 or movie tone aspect ratio was complemented by the spherical lenses and the effect of that combination lended itself well to shooting vertical objects as it made the frame taller, cramped interiors feel a bit more cramped, texturized and gross and it made the mini Bergman-esque super close-ups more awe-inspiring and foreboding. Lighting is rarely something I take notice of on my first viewing of a film, but considering how I knew a few of the specs going in, I was interested to see how they handled it because the double X black and white film stock has virtually remained the same since the 50s. And the sheer amount of light needed to properly light it is insane, so the naturalistic and practical look of the picture stood out to me immediately. It's actually beyond me how they pulled it off so well. Eggers directed the hell out of every frame of this film, and given the fact that he often cites his cinematographer as a tight collaborator, I have to credit them both for the cinematographic mastery of The Lighthouse. Eggers opts to shoot his films with no coverage, and while that decision can make editing an absolute nightmare as you can suddenly find yourself painted into a corner, forced to stitch together images that don't flow well together to form a cohesive cinematic structure, that shot specificity really paid off here. From the long takes of everyday tasks to holding on Pattinson's face during what should be a mundane dinner scene long enough to impart his discomfort onto the audience, the precise and deliberate nature of this style invites you into the interiority of the characters, making you an active participant in the madness. The directing is also tied to the brilliant set design here because the camera needed room to move in the cramped spaces that make up the majority of this film's setting. The dramatic camera movements, specifically in the lighthouse itself, feel like anachronistic modern observations of a story set in the 1890s with lenses that look like they belong in the silent era that come together to form a finished image that belongs in the 1960s. It's odd, but it's great. I'm Robert Eggers, the director of The Lighthouse. We built every building in, in the film, including a 70-foot working lighthouse. That was partially because we couldn't find locations that served the story, but also for control. Some of the dramatic camera movements in the film are written into the script as is, and the lighthouse being so tall and our location being so remote and our budget being modest, we weren't able to get a tall enough techno crane to do a lot of the shots we wanted to do. So Craig Stewart, the key grip, had to invent various camera equipment with ropes and pulleys to execute these shots that were designed by me and Jaron Blaschke, the photographer. But this boom shot up the center of the lighthouse is the first of the moments that might suggest that there is or could be something supernatural uh, happening. And we, and we wanted to create 
a mystery around the light, around the Fresnel lens, uh, the jewel inside the the beacon of, of the lighthouse tower. Also on the set design, the period accurate detail is astonishing. I couldn't help but let my eyes wander around the lighthouse station and observe the door handles, kitchenware, and other everyday items that I typically ignore, especially on a first viewing. The screenplay written by Robert and Max Eggers is fantastic as well. Grounded by a strict adherence to the period, mined from journals, fictionalized interviews written in dialect, and an actual dissertation written on the subject, this story is a rich examination of masculinity as a separate, isolated characteristic and the toxic trappings of such a phenomenon as our two main characters are isolated men stranded inside of a phallic structure surrounded by one of only two female characters in the entire film, the all-encompassing and all-powerful C. Exploring the superego is nothing new in cinema, but doing so in the smart way, showing us a character who resists introspection and therefore is unable to interrogate his own flaws, cramped up with someone who has the ability and the wisdom to examine and force one to face himself is fresh and just an incredible angle to take. The real life Smalls Island tragedy in Wales where two men get stuck in a lighthouse and really bad things happen was a jumping off point for the story and on its face that is apparent. The outward facing literal narrative is pretty close to that premise but the mythological side of this story is perhaps the most interesting aspect of the writing to me. This is a Promethean tale of a flawed man in pursuit of a light who has to contend with a Proteus-like old man at sea to gain access to said light. And this Apollonian and Dionysian struggle is never anything less than engrossing and wonderful. It should be noted that this film is surprisingly hilarious, full of straight-faced Shakespearean monologues performed aggressively and at times drunkenly by Willem Dafoe and full-on fart jokes and visual gags. Speaking of Defoe, the breathtaking performances are yet another perfect piece of this immersive puzzle, and I really couldn't imagine another pair of actors making this work so well. Their performances are so unique and their dynamic really sets this apart from other psychologically twisted two-handers like Bergman's 1966 masterpiece Persona or Losing and Pinter's 1963 classic The Servant, two films that played directly into the identity crisis craze of the 1960s also explored in films like Seconds, which also came out in 1966. The mythological backbone of the story and the devilishly clever symbolism are also things that help distinguish this film from other psychodramas of a similar mold. Also, it's crazier than most straight up horror films could ever hope to be if we're just talking about the basic sequence of events and what's shown, so there's that. The music and sound design added so much, and it's almost impossible to convey with words how powerful it made the theatrical experience. You feel the basic weight of the lighthouse horn, you hear the leaky drips around the lighthouse station, you hear the floor creak and the sea crash in the distance in such a realistic and consistent way, it's easy to forget that you're not actually sitting around these two characters observing them both slip into complete madness. Overall, look, I can go on for days about the brilliance of this film, and perhaps someday I'll dive deeper because I've barely scratched the surface in this review. Just trust me, The Lighthouse is an unmatched piece of cinematic gold that deserves to be seen and studied by cinephiles for years to come. As overused as I believe this term is in the context of contemporary cinema, The Lighthouse is genuinely a piece of art and a masterpiece. See it, digest it, and pass it on. Thanks for watching. I'm Lee. And I'm a fake critic.